my first question was it was a bit different until yesterday morning when I heard Tom Tague's uh, excellent keynote and he made a statement that I, I thought we, we have to address here. He said that semantic search <coughs> is the answer to a question that no one is asking. So I, I'm betting that you all disagree with this statement, but I, I think he does have a point about consumer satisfaction with current search. And, and I think a couple of you agreed with me this uh, earlier this morning that, that mass consumers are not out there clamoring for, for a better search. So my first question is what, why, why are we even here? Why do we need to change search? Yeah. Well, it's like with every product. I mean, I mean, if you look at the history of technology, I can, I can hardly see examples when you, you, you know, the users were demanding in a popular vote an iPod and Apple delivered the iPod, you know. It doesn't happen this way. So uh, it's kind of argument is kind of silly because uh, uh, if I tell you that you can improve search uh, by reducing the distance between query and the answer rather than having to click and stroll, scroll and, and uh, perform all these operations which we often you have to do today, uh, you can reduce the distance uh, I mean, surely you would, you would like the feature. I think most of uh, the time users don't know how, how good search can be. And that's, that's, a, that's a thing, and Google <coughs> did a spectacular job on, on the keyword search and overall, and it's a, it's a great product, and, and so are others here, but in the same time, uh, you know, I feel that it's, it's like, uh, well, when they see, they will want it. It's kind of chicken and egg principle. You know? So. It I, I'd like also Peter and, and Andrew to weigh in on this because you, you're at companies that ha, have been have been working on search for a very long time. So one, do you feel we need to change search? Obviously you do. It, you're, you're, you're both chief scientists. You're, you're, you're constantly innovating. Um, but <clears throat> especially since you're delivering products that are currently working for consumers, why do we need to change it? Peter? Yeah. <coughs> I think as an industry, the uh, satisfaction is very high. You know, there's these uh, indexes of uh, how satisfied people are with, with various products, and search engines always come out uh, near the top. Uh, but that's just because that's what people know. And I, I agree with the premise that uh, nobody's clamoring for technology because people don't like technologies. They like solutions. They want their problems to go away. And uh, they're pretty happy now with uh, search. It, it, uh, causes certain problems to go away, but there's all sorts of other things we could do that they haven't imagined yet that they want. And uh, when we deliver them, they'll want it, and then they'll want us to make that even better. Mm -hmm. I, I think if the question is, uh, does search need to, need to change, um, the, the answer is it, it already is. If you, if you look back to maybe 2004, 2005, and compared what you saw in a search result page, it was just about the same thing you saw in 96. It was 10 links. But today, on any sort of major search engine, if you search for uh, a restaurant, you're going to see uh, structured information about that restaurant. You'll have the phone number, the address. You'll have links to reviews that may, in fact, have been culled from all over the web and that may have been extracted through either um, publisher tools, semantic web technologies, uh, automated extraction, and uh, this has been accelerating over mm -hmm. the last three or four years. We're seeing more and more inclusion of this type of data. And w when we put this kind of information up and trigger it correctly, we see levels of engagement from our users that are higher than anything else we see in search. So I, I think search is already on this path, and users are sort of uh, maybe clamoring with their, with their uh, keyboards, if, if you will, um, for more of it. Excellent. OK. So, so then let's talk about the, let's integrate semantics into that. And I, I think the, the, if it could be qualified as a stupid question, but I think it needs to be asked, what is semantic search? How do you actually define it? Scott. 
Um, well, I think semantic search can be a lot of different things. It can be everything from uh, answering questions from structured data uh, to understanding completely unstructured text and using that to improve the, the relevance of the search results and the presentation of those results. So I do think it means a, a lot of different things. Um, at PowerSet, we really focused on the latter, trying to have a much deeper understanding of, what, of, of the meaning that was in these web pages so that we could do a better job of surfacing them, uh, of ranking them, and also in, in presenting them in, in, in the captions, the, the snippets below the 10 blue links. So has your focus on, has PowerSet's specific focus on semantics, has that been diluted at all by, by the by the acquisition? No, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, I think we're still focused on, uh, on, on doing this kind of deep analysis. Um, we're also working on uh, things on the other end of the spectrum. On, and we did that at PowerSet as well, on uh, uh, being able to answer a wide range of different natural language questions from structured data, allowing people to express themselves naturally rather than worrying about particular keywords uh, or exactly how they're phrasing. Uh, their query, uh, doing things like sense disambiguation so that we know, you know, a particular name may refer to a, a few different things. Um, those are all things that we're, we're continuing to work on and that uh, some of which are already surfacing in Bing and others that will surface over time. Okay. So, Riza, I spoke with someone from Hockey about a year ago. I think you and I talked about that. And uh, to paraphrase him, I seem to remember him saying something along the lines of that Hockey was the only one doing true semantic search. So how do you, is that true? And how do you define semantic search? <coughs> well, it's, it's not true, of course. I might have said, said that just for the, <laughs> just to fool you. <laughs> uh, the, we, we do things in a very, um, uh, we, do, we do everything from uh, scratch. We started doing, uh, a, the optimizing the um, the platforms and then building an ontology that's language independent. So we actually did everything by the book. Uh, and then now we have the problem of adjusting to the reality of, of search. And if you give me a second, I'll actually uh, expand on your uh, previous question about what is semantic search. Uh, and the way we see it is we have to look at this in two ways. First, the future and the now. What can be do done now with the semantic technology? Probably three things. We, we could enrich the results. That means you type in one thing, the search engine brings you all different variations of articulations and right answers. The second one is the precision. It's very important. It requires disambiguation and all that stuff. And the third one is the organization, that you enter one term and then search engine brings you results in a very organized manner, showing all the uh, categorizations and aspects of the query. This is what can be done today. But the future definitely needs a semantic technology because we believe that the search is going to move to more conversational systems. It's going to be, you will be talking back and forth with a search engine, and for that, you really need semantic technology. 